Welcome. Tonight we are unraveling the truth behind child mental illness more than parental love. And I just want to pre-frame this that we're probably going to ruffle some feathers tonight. We're probably going to say some things that make you question who we are and how dare we because we're out of the box thinkers. We come from a different perspective. We come from the perspective of universal truths. We come from the perspective of laws that govern. And I want to say, if you've never heard of that word or if it sounds kind of like uh, new agey, I want to say that gravity is an earthly law. And gravity is something that applies to us all, whether we like it or not, believe it or not, or know it or not, it applies. If you don't know about gravity and you walk off the edge of a cliff, you're going to fall anyways. So when I say universal truth, I'm talking about things like cause and effect. There is a cause to every effect and there's an effect to every cause um, or there's a, an effect of every cause, I should say. And we, be, we are being affected, affected by some great causes that are going on outside of our control. And so before we get too uh, deep in, we are waiting for some people to join us. I am Bonnie Leota. I've been involved in personal development since 1994 when God instilled a dream in my heart to find a way to empower all the children by the age of 12. 18 years later, he introduced me to the way. 18 years after working on me as a person, we did some training last night, Angela, and we were talking about in order to change the do, we've got to change the who. So I spent 18 years changing the who of who I was, transforming my own uh, childhood trauma to become somebody that could lead teams and somebody that could be successful in life. But my biggest dream was to empower my kids and I was failing badly. They were all being diagnosed with different mental health issues, oppositional defiant disorder, ADHD, anxiety, depression. And here I was, this very successful public speaker going around to all the meetings, telling people that they were born perfect, but often conditioned into mediocre thinking, which means feelings of unworthiness. And then I was going home and living a secret nightmare, crying in my bathroom in fetal position as my kids just took over my house and uh, started wrecking my house and beating up each other. And I absolutely did not know what to do until I met this gentleman right here who's going to just take a moment to introduce himself. Uh, good evening. My name is Thomas Leota. And first and foremost, I had no idea the journey that God put me on was going to be a parenting program. I've always seen kids as just little geniuses who always embrace their own uniqueness. I've had the privilege and honor to work with thousands of kids through a martial art program that became an award-winning uh, before and after school program. But when I got a chance to really work with these kids, I got a chance to work in one of the lowest income areas in uh, South Seattle where every label that was introduced to me I never knew existed until I met their kids, but I never saw it the way that they described it and was able to create magnificent guiding and championship out of every single kid where I really didn't understand what these labels were or what, why they were even on medication or any of these things. Cause nobody could ever give me a reason why, but they all rose up and became champions in their own unique way. And once again, like I said, every child is a champion and I have yet to find one that's not. And once again, I had no idea this was going to be a parenting program until I met Bonnie. And that fast forwards to here we are today. Yeah. So he's being humble. So I just want to say he had an award winning after school program with thousands of kids came through his program. He could actually take up to 100 kids at a time on field trips. hundred. So we say I had four kids and you knew when I entered the Walmart. <laughs> they were just like little <laughs> tornadoes. And he could take the same kids and which is what I saw with my own eyes and have them stand at attention stance with their hands to the side being respectful and kind and i just thought oh my goodness where did you learn to do that so the more you get to know us the more you're going to learn the more you're going to like and i want like angela to take a moment to introduce herself here hey everybody it's absolutely awesome to be here with you tonight and uh you know i'm a parent of two grown children who have given me four beautiful uh grandchildren grandsons 
And I don't know about you, but until somebody kind of, something kind of happens, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And I guess I was just moving along in life and, you know, doing personal development. That's where I met Bonnie, you know, about 15 years ago and um, been an entrepreneur all my life, even though I'm a teacher by trade. It wasn't until my grandson, my one grandson was like, he was on his way to being labeled ODD, I'm pretty sure. And my daughter was suffering, um, trying to figure out how to parent. And I didn't know what to do. I, you know, back in the day, I was doing the Dr. Laura thing and I started searching online. And, and the reason that I connected, reconnected with Bonnie and Tom is for the very same reason that you are here tonight. Those of you parents that are here tonight after having prayed for some kind of answer to your parenting uh, challenges. And uh, they were doing a live on Facebook. I saw them. I didn't realize Bonnie was back in town, like nearby. And I got extremely excited about the fact that they were speaking something I'd never, ever heard before. And tonight, I want you to sit, open your mind to getting more of an explanation as to why parenting is so difficult in today's world and where it's come from. And you know, I watched, and I'll kind of introduce what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight here, or why we're going to talk about what we're talking about tonight. My husband and I sat down on uh, Sunday evening, and we watched a documentary, and my mind was just blown wide open. And I began to understand why there's so much confusion and so much uh, chaos around parenting. And how easily things can get out of hand if you don't understand these universal laws and, and truths and principles that uh, Bonnie and Tom teach. So I'd just like to say that tonight is going to be a absolutely beautiful opening and exposure to some things that you maybe have never thought of before. But when Bonnie talks to you about what she did in 2018 and how this documentary um, was was uh, put out in 2019, and some of the the tragedies that have gone on uh, even since then, you'll begin to understand why you need to stay close to us, why it's so important to open your mind to um, understanding the chaos that's going on in, right now in the world and, and why. So anyway, back to you guys. I'm looking forward to uh, this live. It's going to be absolutely incredibly exceptional in my view well thank you and i think the reason why is because here we are all of these beautiful moms moms and dads some dads doing their best doing the best they can with what they've been taught in parenting and here was a line from the documentary you can do the best you can and the kids still go off the rails as if you have no control. And what we want to do here tonight and every time we speak with you is breathe life into you. You have all the power, mom, dad. You have all the power to make all the difference. Not one parent whose child grows up, who takes a gun to school and shoots dozens of their classmates and then themselves ever believe it's going to happen to them. They do the best they can with what they know. Now, we the documentary came out in 2019, and something they said was, we have not learned the lesson yet of why Dylan Klebold woke up the morning and went to Columbine in 1999. I thought this was so powerful because I was moved to write this book in 2018, so about a year before the documentary came out, and you can see in chapter two, I write an imperative message from our kids. And let me just read a little bit to you out of that. And then I've got a couple other voices who need to be heard. They need you to hear them if you would like to actually make a difference for your family. If, you, if you're here because you authentically want to help your child live a successful life without you. Now, if you if you want, you know, fast results, immediate gratification, you want your kids just to sit in a corner and listen, do what they, you tell them to do, then this is probably not the place for you. But I don't believe that to be true because I've seen 
all of you answer the questions that you are asked when you join the group. And almost every single one of you says that you have a child that has been diagnosed with a mental health disorder, mostly oppositional defiant disorder, and that you refuse to label or medicate, but you don't know what to do. So as we say things that make you go, oh, is that true? Or, oh, I'm kind of skeptical. Or, oh, I don't believe that. I want you to take a deep breath and go, you're praying for an answer and you've been brought here. We do know how to help you. Your kids are crying out for answers. It says parents all over the globe are struggling unnecessarily with the behavior of their children. We hear complaints of constant anger, arguing, and frustration silently residing. Angela, I don't know. Um, there's a little bit of feedback. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, the toxic, okay. The toxic and dark environment that we have been taught to create in our homes and classrooms throughout parenting books, articles, and videos are not just frustrating. It's downright frightening. So what I'm telling you here, what the kids are telling you here is that the environment that we are being taught by the experts, by the ones who have studied child development, by the ones who are telling you about neurodiversity or neurodiverse children and how every child is different. So you need to learn how to do a different thing with every child is completely off the mark. And your kids, outrageous behavior, their outbursts, their screaming is is kind of like Horton hears it who like I'm here, I'm here. I need something to change. I I'm I'm four years old, I'm five years old, I'm 13 years old, I'm 15 years old, and I don't know what it is, but I'm counting on you, mom. I'm counting on you, dad, to figure this thing out because deep inside I have no purpose. And before I even go in here, I, I, I'm just I'm just moved to bring you to, it's called The Voice of Knowledge by um, Don Miguel Ruiz. And he says, this before I share with you what I wrote in my book. I found this afterwards. He says, at home, I hear my parents say, Miguel, you have to behave this way to be a good boy, which means that if I don't behave that way, I'm not a good boy. They don't say this, but I understand this. You have to do this, this, and that to be a good boy. Then you'll get a reward. And if you're not that way, you'll be punished. Oops, I'm too small. They are so big. I try to rebel and I fail. They win. I start pretending to be what I'm not to avoid the punishment. And that statement right there is so powerful. If you want to go watch, um, it was the American tragedy on, on Prime. Okay, so when I go through this book, I want you to imagine your little kid going, I try to rebel. I, I try to tell you there's something wrong. I try to have, I cry. I get upset. I freak out. I'm like, I'm just like this little being like who's exploding because I don't know how to express my emotions that are going inside. This does not mean there's something wrong with your child, that they're neurodivergent, that they need some sort of medication. This is a real authentic message coming from your kids. And I go on to say, did you know that ADHD and other child behavior and mood disorders, including anxiety and depression, have increased to the tune of more than 54% of today's youth being prescribed medication as a solution? This was back in 2018. Millions of toddlers between the age of two and four being medicated for something called terrible twos that's completely preventable. All in your control. Because why? You control the environment. So I want you to imagine a plant that you have. Have you ever seen a plant that is kind of the leaves are kind of falling off and it's turning yellow and you take the plant and you move it from one area of the house to another. Maybe you water it a little bit less. Maybe you're overwatering the plant and, and the, all the leaves start falling off. But as soon as you stop overwatering it, it flourishes and becomes beautiful. The same thing can happen with the same child that is ADHD, the same child that is ODD, the same child that is thinking suicidal thoughts. Suicide used to be the number one cause of adolescent worldwide when I wrote this. Does anybody know the number one cause of death for adolescents now? Write it in the comments if you do. I'll come back to the comments here in just a couple minutes. All right. School gun shootings, 
done by children's classmates have increased by 300% in the last few decades. Did you know that school gun massacres began just decades ago? The Thurston High School shooting, for instance, occurred May 21st, 1998 in Springfield, Oregon. The perpetrator, a 15-year-old freshman. He'd been scheduled to appear at an expulsion hearing the day before. He murdered his parents, killed two of his classmates, and wounded 25 others. Well, only a year later, the Columbine school massacre took place. Now, this is the documentary from the mom of Dylan Klebold that's on Prime right now. And they're, they're, they're just, they're, it's, they're so off the mark that it's like literally heartbreaking. I cried through the whole documentary. I was just like, oh my gosh, like if I could just infuse, if I could infuse what's in my mind into your mind, into your soul right now, you would change how you parent in an instant. You would, you would instantly see it, but you might not see it right now. But I promise you, we have the answer and we're, and something's going to click for you tonight. So Please stick with us as we go here. So only a year later, Columbine school massacre took place with school shooting and attempted bombing on April 20th, 1999, Columbine, Colorado, by two 12th grade students, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, who murdered 12 students and one teacher. Until Columbine, most school-related gun shootings were like 100 years ago, somebody would go to the school and shoot the teacher because she was having an affair. <laughs> like she, He was in love with her. There was always like a purpose behind any other school gun or school gun shootings, right? But not now. Where, what is the purpose? So when I try to contemplate about these massacres happening constantly, constantly, I get to see that when God wants you to learn a lesson, you will initially experience a little pain, then a bit more, until eventually you're hit in the head with a great big brick. And I didn't even, I, I forgot that I wrote this in there. I say this all the time. If you're not going to learn your lesson, you're going to experience the same pain again in your life from a different circumstance and again and again. Now, I want you to see all of the uh, school gun shootings that had taken place when we published this book. So every single line here, there's one, there's two. So there's a whole page here. There's a whole page here. There's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of school gun shootings. And now there are hundreds every year. There's a message behind these kids. They, it's not the gun's fault. There's a message that these kids are trying to share with you. And, it, and it's right here. And if you missed it, it, it is. If you're not the way I want you to be. If you don't dress, act, talk, learn get good grades, do your chores. If you, if you don't be the person I want you to be, then you'll be punished. And you try to rebel, you're going to fail because you're a child and your parents are bigger and they're always going to win and you have no say. So something that really um, struck home for me now, let me just, okay. Um, was when his mom kept talking about, but I loved him so much. But I, but I would always tell him, I'm so proud of you, Dylan. I'm so proud of you, and I love you so much. Now, this part might make your feathers go, what? When I saw her do that, I cringed. I cried. I went, ew, how gross. And this, this is the message that will change everything for you if you could get it. And I mean it, I mean it with love. The only reason that we're here is to help your family go to the positive side, the light side, the bright side, the, the life side of where the kids want to live, where they have a zest for life, where they have a purpose for life. So when I say, ooh, it's because our children are not here just to give us something to love. If all we had to do was love our children to create perfect child mental health, then we would all have perfectly healthy children, wouldn't we? So I, I just want to open it up. Um, I, I want to hear what you're thinking um, in the comments. Share something. What is, what is your thought process here as I say this before I move on further? I've got more evidence to prove what we're saying here. 
so that you can see the truth, so that you can step into a leadership role with your child, so that you can see that they're they're not here just for you to love them and they're not here just to love you. There's more to life to it than that. I see comments. Um, you're speaking the truth, Bonnie. Yes, I am. I see drugs. Drugs is the number one killer. Fentanyl is the number one killer has taken over from 2018 to 2023. Fentanyl has taken over and become the number one killer of youth. And is that not still suicide in a sense? Yes. And if you have an option on your Facebook, instead of being a Facebook user, I believe there is an option there so we can see your name. We'd love to know you by name and uh, talk to you by name other than just Facebook user. There is an option there for you. And Kelly Coob is just showing up. She is now watching. So we get a chance to know who she is. So hello and welcome, Kelly. The other ones, we're hoping to know your name and become acquainted. Awesome. Angela, do you have any thoughts about what I'm talking about before I move forward? Well, it's just, it's overwhelming to think that um, when, when I was watching that documentary, American Tragedy, and I really didn't know the details, and to see it through a mother's eyes, to see her story through a mother's eyes, through her eyes, the mother of somebody who was capable not mentally well, but capable of murdering his school aged, you know, acquaintances. It, it just blew my mind how she, even at this point, how many years later, hadn't put the two things together, like put anything together. She had no explanation and nobody was offering her through this documentary, any explanation or have any theory behind how parenting could be different. In fact, I think the thing that kind of riled me up the most was when they started talking about, and you, you'll probably get into this a little more detail of, of this sort of ridiculous idea that teachers could take a grade, you know, one or maybe kindergarten child and teach them breathing techniques to handle ex anxiety and frustrations. And it was just overwhelming to me to think that the world was going to take that as being a, a way to prevent this terrible tragedy that happened and has been happening ever since. They just had no clue absolutely no clue you're making a really and good point there angela where at the end of the day you hear these same moms that had no clue that their child was doing blank i loved them so much i told them every day how much i love them and if you watch the documentary the kid was like looking straight and mom's like really you love me and it the thing that we need to bring up to Captain Obvious here is it's not a question. It's something causing it because it's happening. You can't deny it. But to walk through life and be a parent that has been led down a path of, I don't know. We believe in our heart of hearts. That's got to go. Because if you knew what it was, who would do it on purpose? And I want to just bring it back a little lightheaded here and go, does anybody ever put spinach in their teeth before they leave the house? <laughs> I don't think anybody really does, but it gets there. And see, when Bonnie kind of opened up the, the can a little bit here and said, hey, we might ruffle your feathers. Well, let me ask you this. If it came down to parenting of, I don't know, how it got there. Would you rather have a conversation with somebody at lunch for two hours, go to the bathroom and then see it? Or would you have somebody want to just give you that little bit of a pinprick of a, yeah, it's feeling a little awkward, but thanks for telling me, but I, I feel a little off the mark here. Hey, psst, you got something in your teeth. You see, mm -hmm. that's what we're here to share with you is that it's, it is happening. 
But if there was something that you were doing that you're open to be that little bit uncomfortable, like the spinach in the teeth, then stay here. If you're not, well, good luck. We got nothing for you because you're not willing to grow and doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different income. Well, let's just say outcome, (laughs) outcome, not income. Oh, I see. You were doing that on purpose to see who was listening. Yeah. See, (laughs) then Uh... the point is expecting a different change, a cause and effect. Yeah. That's the definition of insanity. So if you're not insane yet, well, let me ask you how close to insanity do you feel like you're at at your wits end? And that's why Bonnie and I are here is to point out that spinach because when you know what you don't know, every single parent tells us this again and again, where were you 10 years ago? Where oh, were you yes. when I was having my first kid? Boy, I would have loved to have you when I was having my kids. I'm now working with my grandkids. Yes. You see, the I don't know has got to go. Sing it with me, everybody. I, I don't, don't know, know has, has got, got to, to go. go. The I don't know has got to go. And, and that's why you're here. And you know what? And if you're here and you've got little kids and it's not 10 years later and you're not going to you're not in a position to say, where were you 10 years ago? Don't don't wait another 10 years till things are so far off the mark and then come find us and go fix my kids. You have an opportunity to right now. We're the only ones I've been I've been doing research on parenting. Well, on success since 1994, on parenting since 1998, on uh, looking for any type of parenting that's goal-oriented, solution-oriented, on the positive side of the spectrum since I met Tom in 2011, I can honestly say, if you find something better than creating champions for life, show me. I'd be willing to eat my words. I Because as of this moment right now, there's nothing on the planet as good that will help you like creating champions for life. I talked to a mom yesterday in Romania. We've got people online tonight from uh, from Australia. We've got people online tonight from Hong Kong. We've got people tonight from all over Canada, all over the United States. And here's here's the thing. I'm just going to drive this a little bit home. OK, so here's Miguel. I read you the first part earlier in the presentation. I want to know. First of all, do you want better for your family? Are you willing to pay the price to help your child learn to thrive in this world rather than just survive? Are you willing to get outside the box of the norm of the only thing that the mental health people will teach you is what they've learned in school? Give us a hundred kids in a room with Tom and a hundred people who have have a child health degree and see which one the kids actually swarm around and follow. And it's the one who sees them as the little genius, not the ones who see them with something wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with your child. We guarantee our work. Just work with us for a little while. You'll see. Because Miguel goes, I remember trying so hard to become what they wanted me to be, just to have the reward of their attention, just to hear them say, Miguel, You're such a good boy. What I what I don't notice behind all these messages I hear are the silent messages that are never said, but that I can understand. So I want you right now to imagine your little three year old, your little five year old, your 15 year old, however old going. I'm not the way I should be. Are they screaming? Are they kicking the wall? Are they getting in trouble at school? Are they causing heartbreak in your home? I want to say congratulations because if it wasn't for the heartbreak, you wouldn't have the burning desire to come here. You wouldn't have enough oomph inside your soul to do what it takes to help your children. They're giving you the purpose. They're giving you a a, a big enough reason to go, mom, dad, fix this. Because he's saying, I'm not the way I should be. It's not okay to be me. This is what children who have mental health issues believe in their soul. It's not okay to be me. If the message is, Miguel, you have to work hard to become a somebody. That means that right now I'm a nobody. In a child's mind, the silent message I understand is I am not good enough. 
And I'm going to expand on that to say, I am not good enough. So why even bother trying? You see, the power of what we're talking about is kicking, biting, clawing, smashing something, yelling at the top of your lungs. Well, tell me what part of someone pushing your head underneath the water that you're fighting for your life, that all those behaviors come out exactly the same. If they're fighting for their life, for somebody to see that little genius who's just embracing her own uniqueness and was promised that somebody would see it and guide them, not how you want them to do it, but how they can do it in their own unique way. That might be your first like, oh, I think I just saw something I didn't even know. I didn't even know. And I have a little spark of hope that the I don't know can't actually go. There's nothing wrong with your kids. What if it was the approach? That means it's something that's measurable because it's mentionable. And if it's measurable, it's manageable. Okay, and I'm going to share this. And we're going a little bit longer than I wanted to, but hopefully you're enjoying the message and whatever it is, what it is, watch the replay later. When you're talking to pediatricians, doctors, people that are teaching you about, I have a neurodivergent child, this, that, the other. They're basically teaching you that your child does not have the ability to, to grow, to learn, to become something else. To, to step into their power, right? You, we think that they're broken, that they need medication. They need some sort of treatment therapy. They need, they need something outside of their soul when, when the truth is that they don't. Now, I've studied personal development now for over 30 years. Thomas has worked with thousands of kids his entire life. Angela has been in personal development. Oh, she was a teacher by trade, joined me in business over 15 years ago, invested over $100,000 in her personal development. Tell me, Angela, if I'm correct when I say that every single personal development teacher will tell you that you that the neurons in your brain grow all the time. I mean, if 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 you're 16 before you learn to drive a car, doesn't can a 16 year old learn some new neural pathways that they didn't have before? So Angela sends me this book. It's called The Million Dollar Day. And, it, and it's, it's totally not to do with parenting at all. It's to do with personal development. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this story for you and help you see. Because he says, in the year 2010, we built a home in a really quiet area. So they were like in the middle of the desert. They were the only house around. So there was no traffic problems at all. Uh, fast forward shortly, the economy began to recover. There was a supernova of new homes, dozens and dozens of new homes. And so at one point in time, and I'm fast forwarding because it's the whole story and I'm fast forwarding down to here, but basically they build all these homes and all of a sudden in their, in their home area, there's traffic jams down the road and around the corner to get to where they wanted to go. So he goes every summer, um, every summer, the Hoverson tribe exiles ourselves from the overheat of Arizona. So every summer, the family takes off for a few months. So when they come back, we return back to Arizona. A few months later, we noticed the old two-lane road became a six-lane road. And a flurry of new traffic lights were in place. Immediately, even though there was now even more homes, even more cars, even more people, there was zero congestion, zero traffic issues, and everything was calmer and more beautiful. So how does this relate to neuroplasticity? <laughs> neuroplasticity, in short, is a term that describes the capacity of a brain to create new neural pathways to adapt to new realities. Okay? Your kids have the potential to be, it's do, and have anything. Too, it's never too late. Correct. It's never too late. And what's beautiful about what you just talked about, in fact, is that every parent here has their own neural pathways. They've got certain ways of habitual ways of behaving and acting and thinking about their children. And the bottom line is, is there's not a single parent that's listening to this right now that hasn't got the potential to learn a new way, just like their children who have been, you know, raised in a certain way since their birth have got the potential to actually create new neural pathways. 
Yes. Yes, so, they do. I love that. I love that analogy. No, that's awesome. And me too. And I've been thinking about this book for months and I finally shared it tonight. So I got to share this. You've got Dylan Klebold. He, after he murders a whole bunch of his classmates and he dies and the psychologist that took his journals could see that he had been writing hate messages for a long time. And at one point in time, he crossed, he, he writes Dylan Klebold at the top of the paper, and then he crosses out his name, and he goes, F that. F that. I'm not Dylan Klebold. I'm me. If, if that's not clear enough to, to get from the inside of a child what his actual issue was, but they didn't see it. They still don't see it today. Um, I want to go forward to say... I need to say that the prevention of mental illness begins at home, but I wanted to say this. They're teaching mindfulness, like Angela was saying in grade, like kindergarten or grade one. They think that if they teach mindfulness, it'll it'll help stop these school gun shootings later on. And I'm all for mindfulness. I, I, I just did breathing before we went live because I had a really panicked day today and I needed a moment. But it said they said it is likely that as mindfulness is engaged criminal activity anxiety and depression will go down now what i'm what i'm pointing out there well can anyone tell me in the comments what word stands out to you it is likely that if we do this that in 10 years from now criminal activity will go down i'm waiting for the comments i know you're a little bit you're a little bit delayed I'll say hi to the ones that came through. I saw some people actually shifted their names in there. Yes. And I wanted to say thank you for that. Great job. Uh, Jenny uh, yep. and Andrea. Jen yep, Jenny, Andrea. And then also, let's go through again here. Love you guys. Uh, this is so needed. Oh, wait a minute here. I'd like to know who this was again because I, I think I know who it is. But uh, in the world today, 10 years ago, you guys helped me with my two toddlers and fast forward through, uh, we now come, um, lost. You helped me find their sanity update. We have two teenagers that can, uh, talk. We can talk to and come to me with their struggles. We have trust. Interesting. You can't put a price on Who that. Is that. I love that. Oh, you just made my whole day. Uh, I agree. Let Tom come live with us for a week. Hey guys, like, honestly, we don't even need to come live with you for a week. You need to work with us. If you're here going, I don't know what to do. And we're telling you these people who did the documentary go, it is likely that this might help. And we're saying, we promise what we will teach you will help your child. And you go to the positive side. If you're not doing mentoring with us, I don't know what is, would be stopping you. Because we've got mentorship, obviously. We're not, you're not going to get off a presentation like this and then go transform your home. Because you have a whole lifetime of neurons that you've created. We need to help you build the six-lane uh, highway in your own brain so that you know what to do to create an environment in your home so your kids can create a six-lane highway and become the champion that they're, they're begging inside to become. Oh, that hit the spot. Okay, thank you for sharing. I'd love some in-house training. And then, hey, Rhiannon. Oh, Rhiannon. Okay, hi, Rhiannon. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. And still, she's still working with us, so that's great. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. Um, this is Metallica. We're Christians that are going to present Metallica as Unforgiven because the reason why I know this is because a couple summers ago, one of my son's friend's dad died and left him an orphan. And so we adopted him. And his Tyler. And so we were going to the lake and I was asking what songs they wanted to listen to. And so we were listening to this and somehow I brought the words up and I could read the words. And the words are new blood joins this earth and quickly he's subdued through constant pained disgrace. The young boy learns their rules, their rules with time. The child draws in this whipping boy done wrong, deprived of all his thoughts. The young man struggles on and on. He's known a vow unto this day that never from this day he, his will they'll take away. Pause. Come back down a little bit, please. This whipping boy done wrong. How many of us love a whipping? Negative. 
who put judgment of done wrong by somebody else's standards. Negative plus negative always equals negative. And you guessed it, negative. Just the environment. Metallica's song was a voice from our genius generation to come out and go, we are here, we are here, we are here. Especially when as soon as they show up, they're quickly subdued, which means right at birth, we started off with this campaign called, well, you just wait till they turn two, terrible twos. And right then could have been a changing point. If you're going to label it terrible, I would see it as terrific. There's already the first fork in the road, whether you went to heaven or hell. And what road are you on today? It's self-evident. Keep going, Bonnie. Um, okay, so then he says, what I've felt, what I've known, never shined through in what I've shown. Oh, pause right there. Never shined through what I've shown. I'm here. Did you see how I did it in my own unique way? You see, we've got a thumbprint, which is undeniable. We're not here to be imprinted on, to be carboned. We're here to be shown how it works. But let me do it in my own unique way. You see, Quincy Jones was amazing in music. And he said to everybody, he goes, look at all the people that play and produce music, especially like Metallica. And he goes, it's always resounding to me that we all use the same 12 notes. And you we see, have there's a universal the principle. And everybody takes those same 12 notes that are universal and they put their own thumbprint on it and look at what is, we haven't even touched the p potential of what is possible in that. And so once again, uh, where are we at here on the words? What? Right. What I felt, we've all felt it. And what I've known. Never, never shine through, through in what, what I've, I've shown. shown. There was never somebody there to go, wow, look at you doing something in your own unique way. Nope, you got to do it this way. Never free, never me. So I dub thee unforgiven. This is their children speaking to us from their the depths of their soul. They dedicate their lives to running all of his. He tries to please them all, this bitter man he is. Throughout his life, the same. He's battled constantly. This fight, he cannot win. A tired man they see no longer cares. The old man then prepares to die regretfully. That old man here is me. Then at the end, they finish with, you labeled me, I'll label you. So I dub the unforgiven. So powerful. And right here in this moment, can you explain why? Can you explain why hat? Can you explain that why means. that it means dub the unforgiven? I dub the unforgiven. I, I don't forgive you. You label me, me. I'll label I'll you label unforgiven. You, and I'm going to dub you unforgiven. I cannot. I'm going to dub you. Dub you. You label me. You label me. ODD. You label me. Terrible twos. You label me. Teenage rebellion. You label me. A pain in the ass. I dub the unforgiven. I don't forgive you for that. You see, when you can wrap your head around it, if you came here promised as a winning lotto ticket that the parents that you picked to show you how the world works would see your uniqueness, not tell you that you can't do it that way. You got to do it my way, like my way, the highway kind of stuff, controlling, conforming to that. And you were promised that if you could be the one out of a million to show up in physical form and then all of a sudden bait and switch. You label me, I'm going to label you. I dub the unforgiven. You see, how many times I'm like you, you're like me. We probably told our parents to go find unconscious knowledge yourself. 
take a while to get that. Well, sometimes it's on the way home joke. So no this was pretty heavy stuff. Time. We're talking about the truth behind the breakdown of child mental health. Loving our kids is not enough, moms. We, we've got to do more. We've got to learn more, a better way. There is a better way. And if you're just getting to know us, I know some of you watching here have been following us for a long time, never taken a course with us. I'm, I'm wondering why. What, is, what would be stopping you? It's either we don't know how to get involved or we don't want to. And you might not want to because you might believe it's too good to be true. You might believe it won't work for you. It might be too late. It, you might believe that it's too late for you. You might, you might think that, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. You might think you don't have time. You're too busy. You might think that your situation is special and we just don't understand your situation. But we do understand your situation. You wouldn't believe some of the stories that we could share with you, some of the families that we've helped completely transform from where they are. You know, so, I think this path could be the most easiest, simplest way is to take a secret agent approach. <laughs> Go get the Creating Champions for Life app and get the audio version of what Bonnie's been sharing here tonight and listen to it in private. And let it be like one of those songs that you kind of get the groove and you're like, well, like, I like how this beat goes. And then all of a sudden, uh, da, 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 da. and then I might be able to sing the chorus from time to time, but it might take you repetition, which is the second law of learning many, many times before you can start to really get some of the lyrics. And if I'm like you, you're like me, you could listen to a song for 20 years and go, man, I never read the lyrics. I was reading, I was singing it wrong this whole time. So what Tom's saying here. is if, if you're just getting to know us, this is the app. I can put the link for the app um, in the comments here below after the presentation. You can go to Creating Champions for Life on your app store and download the app. You get a free audio book there. All you got to do is actually click free audio book, come down here, click in, get instant access. It'll take you over to the learn tab. Oh, my learn tab is a little bit bigger than your learn tab. I forgot about this. Sorry. But you'll see this, the audio book. Then listen to it. Really listen to it. If if you want different results for your kids, really listen to it. And if you've been following us for a while and you're just kind of sitting on the fence and you're like, oh, my God, like everything makes so much sense. I don't know what to do. I'm not I'm not sure. We guarantee our work. What we teach works. It, no, it doesn't matter the situation that you're in. You could always put help or you could always send us a direct message saying, help me. You can put help me underneath the video. And you can tune in every single week as we go live with answers, with awareness, with solutions, with tips. Every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And so with all that being said, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And we're going to. We, if you're answer, if you're asking, how do we learn? I need help. Um, we will be reaching out to you. Um, like, I'll just reach out to you right after the presentation here. So with all that being said. I want to say thank you so much yes. for taking the courage from inside to follow that little voice. We call it the R cry, the responsibility cry, the little genius guy inside of you that overcame the, but you showed up talking to that little one right inside of you. That's the one that has always been in the back seat, maybe occasionally in the passenger seat, but is looking to have a chance to get in the driver's seat. We can show you the way. And with that being said, we want to celebrate you. Yes, you, that little genius inside. So until we, until meet, we meet again, again here's, here's to, our to our parenting, parenting success. success. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Bye have a great now. night, everybody.